the other two things I want to work on are automating the lasers and setting up the mob grinder and because it will be the faster of the two I'm gonna start with automating the lasers let me go back to the other platform where the lasers are already set up and break all that down and I'll be right back alright I'm back and I'm ready to begin setting up my new assembly table laser area here so what I really need to do and I did make a couple of extra lasers so I'm gonna be up to six lasers over the long run that's not gonna be anywhere close to what I'm at I'm probably gonna have 25 or 50 of them even right now there are some special power considerations on that and even though I sorta of do have the materials for it I'm, I'm not gonna do that so what you need in order to get the lasers working properly is we're gonna need to set down our assembly tables and I'm gonna spread them out a little bit and just like that corner to the lights will be fine then we're gonna want to set down some chests and what we don't want is we're not gonna run a pipe in between them like that but what we can do now is I've got all of those set up so I created some logistics chassis mark fives which will have eight slots so I can make different items this particular configuration will be able to make up to 32 different recipes eight per crafting table and the way it works of course is that I actually made an error here and the more observant of you will have seen it immediately the crafting pipe which in this case is actually a chassis pipe has to go on the output side in other words it's got to be attached to the inventory where the item appears after it's crafted so these actually go on the chests the satellite pipes go on the tables All right. So we can connect this up with some golden pipes, like that and that, and I'm going to go ahead and connect them here too. Alright, so everything is connected up to a pipe, and we don't have any intersections that are not logistics pipes, so we're good there now I need to go ahead and configure all of these satellite pipes to have IDs on them so this one is three and here we have four five and six and pretty much now we just need to get the laser set up so this is going pretty fast the lasers need power and I'm trying to figure out where I want to string, bring the power over from the power solution for this will have to be totally different eventually in the short term I think what I'm gonna do is we'll bring one of them up right about here see if we can get that up here now one thing I don't want to do and it used to be a much bigger problem with build craft but I think they've resolved that it still looks bad though is I don't want to have a loop in the piping I want to actually have a branch system for it so I'm gonna put my lasers actually in two rows but I, I'm not gonna make a big circle here you don't you don't want that so let's put one here and one here and then I'll put one there and there and because it doesn't really matter that much I may expand and fill that out with another couple of lasers sometime I'm gonna put them there and there 
All right, so they've just got to be somewhere near the crafting tables. They could actually be quite a bit higher and further away and still reach them. They're lasers. They shine a long way. Really, I just need to set up recipes at this point and get it connected up completely on the logistics pipe system. Let me go ahead and do that at least before I go downstairs and get some materials for recipes. All right, so it's actually all connected up on the network now. One of the things you've got to be very careful with on this system is to avoid recipe conflicts. It's not so much you've got to worry about spreading every all the recipes out because they all share the same lasers. They're going to divide the power input no matter how you figure it. You definitely want to be very careful about conflicting recipes, and I will show one of those as soon as I get up there. So what I want to do here is this is logis this is satellite ID 3 so I'm gonna come over here and put a crafting module in this and tell it that for satellite 3 I want it to send a redstone that's all I want it to send over there all right, so we're going to send redstone to satellite 3, and what we're hoping to get back is we're hoping to get back a redstone chipset. So what's going to happen is redstone's going to go over here, and we hope to get redstone chipset back over here. But a special consideration on this table is you have to tell it what recipes it's allowed to make. So we're going to say make redstone chipsets. Right next to it over here, this is satellite pipe 4, so let's put in a module here and tell it to send to satellite 4 redstone and iron. And what this is hoping to get back is an iron chipset. So I've got to come over here and put in iron and redstone. And here's where the conflict comes up. If you have this table making any chipset really other than redstone, then you've got a conflict with redstone because the redstone chipset just requires a redstone. And these tables cycle between the recipes they're making. So if you configured it to do both of these, what would happen is half the time when you went to make an iron chipset you'd get a redstone chipset anyway and the, and the thing would be stuck. The redstone chipset has to be on a different assembly table than all of the other chipsets that involve redstone. So keep that in mind because that does come up in several recipes with the assembly table. There is another mod pack that I looked at recently and that I'm sort of thinking about doing a series on. It has the problem that really they, they went and made all of the recipes the same for every for machine that it was making in the assembly table, which is very convenient if you're making them manually because you just pick the one that you want. But for automating, it really means you need a separate assembly table for each recipe, and that is much less convenient. In any case, here I'm going to tell it you're making the iron chipset, and it's going to try to go ahead and make that. If I rip out the ingredients, it won't actually happen. The two remaining chipsets are the gold one and the diamond one. I'm going to quickly set them up here, and then we'll test the system out. All right, time to test the system out. I have temporarily pulled the storage drawer that contained chipsets out of this bank so it's no longer on the network. So if we come over here to the request pipe, and I look at chipsets, I do show zero. So there are none on the network, but it thinks it knows how to craft them. Let's just request one of each. And if I run back up here, the laser is just fired off. It's kind of split between a couple of them. Um, looks like we are getting power. It's split between three of them. There's no good way to control this unless you want to spread your tables way out. It's fine. It's not going to be that often that you're making multiple things here at once. The reason for having multiple tables is just so that you can have more recipes configured. So it's working on a redstone one there. It's 
It's working on an iron one there. Gold here. And I didn't click diamond here, but I will now. So it should be able to start diamond there. So we found one error in my configuration so far. It's a good thing we did testing. All right, testing is done. And it did make the items that were requested. I found on two of the tables I was sending too much redstone. I fixed that. Otherwise, it does appear to be configured properly and working just fine. So I'm ready to do the next thing I want to do with that, which is I'm going to put this drawer back. And I'm going to do something that I'd already done, but I did it behind the scenes and didn't show it. I have added an active supplier module to this pipe that connects up to the storage drawers. And it's basically telling the system that it wants to keep certain items stocked. And the items it's keeping are various gears and various plates and double compressed cobblestone. This makes sure that I have these things on hand. One of the things I did with this was I set it to partial and by setting the request mode to partial it essentially says I want to keep exactly this number here. I don't want you to wait until you're half empty before you refill. And the reason for doing that is that here the constraint is not how long things take to move across the network. It's how long it takes to craft them. These chipsets are actually very slow to craft. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add another active supplier module. And I'm going to tell it to keep certain numbers of chipsets on hand. And again, I'm going with partial. I'm not going to request them all. Well, maybe I can request them all at once. Let me see how many I've got here. I've got 54 golden chipsets, and I plan on keeping a stack. And I've got 74 iron chipsets, and I plan on keeping a stack. And I've got 25 of the redstone, and I'm keeping a stack. Diamond chipsets, I went and looked. They actually are used for more things than I thought they were. But I still don't think that it's really justified to keep a whole stack of them on hand. So I'll probably keep, let's say, 20 of those around. And this is just to make sure that I always have some on hand. If I put a request in, it can pull it out of inventory and then make it up later. Rather than having to go and craft it when I make the request. Because that's going to be very slow. These chips can take quite a while to make, especially the diamond ones. And if I requested something that took 10 diamond chipsets, I would be waiting here forever. So I don't, I don't want to do that. So redstone, let's come in here and put a whole stack in. And golden, let's put a stack in of those. And iron, same thing. That's 74, which is not what I wanted. Just overshot my number a little bit. And here on diamond, let's just keep 20 of them. Now, effectively, I just put in a massive crafting request because it wants to go and make up the shortfall in these things by going and crafting new items. The fact that I'm putting these in here and they'll get distributed in there doesn't even count because it's already made the request. So if I go over here and look, we can see that the laser should be very busy. They won't be making iron ones, I don't think, um, but they are making the other three. So they've sent over 38 redstone here to start making redstone chipsets, eight diamonds, and eight redstone to make up the shortfall in that and then a fair amount of gold and redstone here to, to handle that. So these will be busy for a while. There's plenty of power for them to pull at the moment so that's not really a problem. Most of the time once that stuff is done these will only make up for stuff that's already pulled out of inventory and I won't have to do anything with them. So this is the laser setup. It can be automated. It's not that hard. There is going to be one that's a little bit hard that I'm going to do, and I will 
maybe talk about it a little bit in the next episode. I'm not going to set it up here because it will take a while and it's a little bit confusing maybe. And that is the the machine frame for thermal expansion. I will want to automate that as well. The problem is that these chassis pipes or the crafting modules can only send three items to a satellite pipe but there are five components to those. So I have to have a slight variation on the solution. It can be done and I will show how it was done in the next episode. But for the remainder of this episode I want to talk about mob farm because I'm really going to need some mob components in the form of ender pearls. I'm going to make something pretty simple. It is not going to be what I really need over the long run. I'm going to need a little bit more stuff. But what I'm going to use is I'm going to use conveyor belts from Extra Utilities. In order to actually kill the mobs, a lot of people go with a drop trap. That will work actually pretty well here. Things that doesn't work so well. But I don't want to use all that vertical space right now. I mean, it's actually possible I might want to build another platform up above here. If I were to go down, the drop down to the next platform isn't enough to kill anything, so that wouldn't work. What I'm actually going to use to kill right now, because I don't have anything better, is these punji sticks from Tinker's Construct. I would actually kind of prefer to use spikes from Extra Utilities. The problem is this one requires magical wood. I don't have what I need for that, and an etheric sword. I certainly don't have an etheric sword. This one requires, let's see, it requires the iron spike. The iron spike doesn't require the wooden one, which means you do get to sort of skip over the etheric sword part, but you do have to have a QED, which I'm only going to be able to get after I have ender pearls, not before. Then the golden one requires an iron spike, and again, it's in the QED. Magical wood, that's not going to be a nightmare, but it is going to be something I can't make just right now. The diamond one, again, just an upgrade here. So the wooden one seems very difficult, really, because of the etheric sword. I mean, really? Unstable ingots? Hmm. Let me lay this thing out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up a big frame for it and then I'll fill in the pieces of the frame. So I'll be back when I've got the frame ready so that I can actually show the basic structure of it all. Let's take a quick look of how this thing works and actually set up the kill mechanism. It's a plain cobblestone box. I didn't actually make it look nice. Maybe I should have. I didn't. It can be fixed later if I, if I really need to. It has a couple of features here. It's got lights in the top that mean it can be turned on and off. That's controlled by a lever here. That's always a nice feature to have on a, on a structure like this. The ability to turn it off just in case something goes wrong. There's also a ladder up to the top which is sometimes useful for maintenance. In, on the interior, I haven't finished it all out, but it uses the extra utilities conveyors and the way that it uses them any point that you land on them, it's going to take you forward until it gets to some that go to the side and it's going to send you to this location right here. So this block where I'm standing that's missing is where the kill is going to happen. There is out here a transfer node. It's got five world interaction upgrades in it so it can actually collect items from a pretty big area in here. It also has these windows in the front. This is darkened glass, so light is not going to shine through from outside, at least for purposes of mob spawning. Let me put these sticks down. And one of the more annoying things that happens in these, and I should mention one feature of this is that it is three blocks high on the interior, so it can spawn endermen. It will also spawn spiders, and spiders like to climb up near the top and so if you just put your kill mechanism at the bottom they tend to stick around for a long time and make noises and just generally be annoying so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the sticks down and you can put them down five per block and the way I'm putting them down is I'm starting from the top and going down this way I don't think you can set them in midair that's why I'm doing it this way and they're already biting me <laughs> got to be very careful here not to get um, caught in them. 
So let me come over here. You hold down the shift key and sort of sneak on these to avoid problems with, um... Uh, let's see... You put a regular block... Oh, it's got a glowstone nook in it, doesn't it? Hmm. The one that I can't see. There we go. I'll just plug that hole. When you set these blocks, the direction of conveyor movement is pointing away from you. There is a an indicator here on the side as to which direction it goes, but it is the direction that's facing away from you. Mobs do spawn on these blocks, so I don't have to do anything special. In the future, I might use fans because I will need to use something in conjunction with Cursed Earth. I'll, I'll need to have Cursed Earth on the floor, but I'll still need to be able to move mobs so the conveyors won't quite do the trick. And I'm going to have to make sure that these corners, once they're elevated one more block, do get enough light not to spawn mobs. Alright, so time to fill in the walls and the ceiling. And actually, one block right there. Why can't I get out of here? There we go. Now the ceiling is lit up on top. Can't have mobs spawning up here. For turning on and off the lights, you can see this red stuff, that is, it's red alloy wire from Project Red, which is pretty nice because it's a nice stable sort of redstone that you can run on vertical surfaces as well as horizontal. I was using the framed version of it over in the Batania area earlier so that I could have redstone that was just sort of standing up. Alright, so that's all done there. And... We can see in there... Oh, the back needs to be done. But nothing interesting happening in there right now because the lights are on and I'm too close but if we turn off the lights it does go dark in there you can see it's red everywhere it's all available spawning area as far as the F7 key is concerned and as far as the game is concerned they don't disagree in this case let's go a little ways away and come back and see what has happened Come back over here, see if anything has transpired that's interesting. Yes, so we've got rotten flesh, string, gunpowder, arrows. So it has been killing mobs. So we're good there. The one piece that sort of remains on this, and I'm not going to show it on camera because you've seen it all before, this chest is going to get hooked up to logistics pipes so that I can just put all the stuff on the network. I am going to have to figure out a solution, and I do know one for dealing with all of the bows and armor pieces that are in a partially broken state that have to be disposed of in some way or in the case of the enchanted ones I might want to salvage the enchantment as a book so that I can use it for making let's say magical wood or something but really this is done at this point so I should start collecting ender pearls between episodes I'm actually planning on doing quite a bit of off-camera construction and um, automation because I really want to go ahead and get some of that done. 
it'll be better to actually just show what I've done afterwards on camera rather than go through all the details because that takes a long time to go through all these pieces. You've probably seen it before. I will cover some of the more interesting machines in terms of how I solved a particular problem in automation, but I don't actually think that I'm going to go and cover each and every one of them because there are literally going to be dozens of stations. So I'm going to go ahead and call it an episode, and I hope you enjoyed watching, and I will see you next time. Thank you.